with that, I'll hand it off to Ben. Uh, so I just want to uh, finish up um, with um, maybe something uh, on the positive side, um, that we have tremendous opportunity. So yes, the STEM thing is really important. I think we, uh, we know that. Uh, certainly this audience does, but as Larry, I think, alluded to, really the nation doesn't necessarily know that, and the public doesn't necessarily know that. So we have a well-recognized crisis in competitiveness, uh, in uh, innovation, and for me, I think, um, as the director of K-12 STEM, to me, the real, uh, the, 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 the real, I don't know, tragedy is strong, but the real tragedy is the loss of human capital and the loss of human potential. And particularly in the future, looking at especially the low-income schools that we work in, science, technology, engineering is going to provide the jobs and the economic well-being um, of individuals but also drive creativity and drive innovation. And we're leaving huge amounts of human capital unattended, on the table, in a way that really is, um, that really is a disservice, not only to the nation, but really a disservice to the individual students who are in our schools. Um, we all know, I mean, STEM education is having its moment, right? The president talks about it, Arnie Duncan talks about it. We're having our moment, and that's really exciting, and I think uh, opens up a tremendous opportunity. And I would just note two things that um, I think are driving that opportunity. One is, uh, I saw some data the other day. Uh, in the last five years, the difference between the public's opinion about schools, right track, wrong track, it's sort of like favorable and unfavorable, ratings for politicians. Uh, the right track, wrong track numbers for pu the public's view of public education has plummeted by 30 points. The gap between right track, wrong, wrong track was 8 points. It is now 38 points. So there's a broad, spread, broad recognition that education, K-12 education, is going in the wrong direction. The second thing is the opportunity. You have the economist. Right? Probably the preeminent publication in the world, news magazine, talking about the third industrial revolution this week. This is this week's cover. The advances in nanotechnology, chemistry, uh, material science, engineering, robotics, coming together in the interdisciplinary way that Lindrick alluded to, to create new industries, new businesses, new opportunities, new innovations for improving the quality of life, for transforming the way businesses and manufacturing work. So you have widespread recognition that schools are on the wrong track and tremendous innovation, tremendous things happening in engineering, technology, and science that really come together to give us this moment, this K-12 STEM moment where everybody is talking about it. Um, what I like, uh, what I think is particularly relevant about our program uh, is that we put the focus where it needs to be on preparation, preparation for teachers, preparation for students. I think it's one thing to get kids excited about science. I think you can show up in a sixth grade classroom and blow something up, and people think it's cool. I think it's a real another thing to actually prepare young people to have a choice. And that's really, I think, how we see this. We're not trying to mint scientists and engineers, but in the schools that we work in, these kids have no choice. They get to middle school, they get to high school, they are not prepared to enter a STEM field even if they wanted to. And so we put the focus really on preparation, and I think that's where we're making a big difference. And then finally, I would say, you know, that the new higher STEM standards, we need to help schools meet these new challenges, these new, new standards that are coming up. So what do we do about it? Uh, great universities contribute to the life of a nation. Um, we've created a center for K-12 STEM education at the university to make the whole of our programs, our K-12 programs, greater than the sum of the parts. Um, we're really looking at creating these kinds of long-term engagements with schools on a regular basis, on a, a systematic basis, where we really want to um, continue to work with teachers and students. Um, we want to connect and advocate and participate. I think that's very important. We're part of a national initiative called 100K in 10. Uh, the president called for 100,000 new STEM teachers uh, two years ago in the State of the Union. Carnegie Corporation, Gates Foundation, Broad Foundation, uh, major players in education and education reform came together, 
created 100 k and 10 and we were right there. We applied to be in this, and I think it's uh, critical that everyone in science, technology, engineering, education really focus on teachers and so participate in the kinds of national efforts, local efforts that are going on. Um, and then lastly, I would say, uh, we really want to model good behavior. We not only want to model great programs, and I think we showed you that we have a great program, but we really want to model good behavior. So we're out there every day as advocates, as participants. We're putting together programs. We're trying to find funding, either private or public, to put all of this stuff in place, which then comes around to you. We need to mobilize people in the sciences, in technology, in, ge in engineering, to engage in this kind of way. Yes, let's get kids excited about science. Yes, Larry and what he's doing is terrific, World Science Fair. But we need to prepare them also. And that's the hard work, is really preparing them. And it really takes people coming together in their communities to do that. So that's, that's it. So thank you very much.